thank you everyone for showing up. Uh, I know uh, it's early morning Tuesday, so I want to thank everybody. But first, I want to thank Cherie for being here. I know it's been, um, uh, she's a little bit under the weather, so, but I'm, I'm glad she was able to join us in and hear her, her journey through uh, today's presentation. So before we get started, I just want to mention uh, uh, who's putting this on. So, so I'm the coordinator for Center for New Directions and we support any students in the CTU program such as, uh, such as this one, cybersecurity. We help that by uh, resume help, job placement, also doing some educational workshops such as today to learn more about um, uh, people in the field and how they got to, to, to where they're at through their education path and, and, and what they're doing in the industry. So with that being said, I'll turn it over to Cherie. And, she, and today our presentation is part of the industry series speaker. So she's our, our, almost our last speaker for this year. We have one more coming up in April and that will be, uh, someone will be speaking about welding. So, but today we're gonna focus on cybersecurity. So she's gonna be sharing her, uh, her journey um, and, and, and hopefully through her uh, presentation, uh, students were able to learn about her study of field, work, career, and education, and also um, being in a non-traditional occupation. So, uh, so for that being said, I'll turn it over. And then just the last thing, uh, if you have any questions, just type in in the chat box that I'll, that there'll be some Q&A at the end of the presentation. So if you have anything, uh, I'll be monitoring that and I'll help facilitate that conversation at the end of the, uh, of Sherry's um, presentation. With that being said, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Roberto. It sounds like you're a plethora of resources here at CWI. So if I have any of my students on the line, take note, resume writing. My students would really like an interview workshop. They are just getting ready to kind of graduate and go out into the job force. So maybe that's something we can discuss offline. But thank you so much. This is really, it's my pleasure to be here today. I am still a little under the weather going on day 10, but I'm feeling significantly better today. So. Um, I would be remiss if I get to speak publicly about anything and don't speak about cybersecurity. So I will just give you a heads up. I'm gonna throw in a tiny little cybersecurity lesson uh, during my presentation today. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, yes we Okay, can. perfect. So uh, just a yes. little background on myself. I consider myself a complete a computer geek in some ways, Lego geek in other ways. So I think um, lots of people, I have a girlfriend who's a candle geek. So we all have our sort of thing. But for me, technology has been fortunate to be one of my things from a very young age. So um, I love computers. I uh, have a very strong education. I'm a big believer in continued education. Um, I got my undergraduate degree 20 years ago. So a lot has changed in the industry in 20 years. And if you don't continually update yourself on those changes and those skills, your skills cannot keep up with the industry itself. So um, one of the things I don't have on here, my first master's degree is actually a master's of arts in management. And I went back to college about five years out of undergraduate school because I felt that as an IT person, people were very challenging. Um, I thought computers were very easy. And uh, the more you get into your career, kind of sometimes you get a very technical arena and into a more uh, management over. So I got my first master's degree in people. And then after a few years, um, I decided to pivot my career from general IT, which it had been, to cybersecurity. So I felt the need to get recertified. To be honest, I wanted to become a certified ethical hacker. And I found a university that offered that along with the Cyber Hacking Forensics Investigator Certificate, along with the master's degree. So similar to what CWI offers in their undergraduate program, 
you have the ability in two years to come out of this college with a degree in cybersecurity and potentially two very valuable industry certifications, Network Plus and Security Plus. And um, those aren't easy certifications by any means, but it is a really unique program at a junior college level. So I feel like you guys have a really unique opportunity here at CWI in the cybersecurity realm. And it's just getting better. The program has so many things on the forefront. So it's just really getting to be a, a phenomenal program. Um, this slide deck I used for lots of other things. So I would kind of define the types of hackers my daughter thinks is really cute because she's a bit of a gray hat herself. So here we've got a little bit of my background. I went to college, worked for a while, went back to college, worked for a while, got certifications, worked. So I think what's important is you have to understand in an IT capacity of any kind, I feel very similar to healthcare. Those are fields that grow rapidly and you have to stay on top of. And so continued education is something you have to subscribe to, to be good in this profession. Um, and then I just sort of jumped off a little bit into teaching you a little bit of cybersecurity. So I just, I think it's so important to understand that we as humans are the biggest cyber risk. And if we can just do a couple little things, it would change everything. So um, these are some of the statistics, which I find difficult even to read sometimes. 48% of cyber attacks target small business. Small business doesn't have the money to pay fines and uh, ransomware and things like that. Small businesses are extremely vulnerable. And of those small businesses that are hacked, 76% of them are unable to mitigate the attack. So really, truly, small businesses are struggling in a cyber realm. And so I think it's a good to understand some of the reasons why that's happening, primarily because small businesses have a very big disconnect between their data and their security. And so they think things like everything's stored in the cloud. Okay, well, how secure is your cloud account for heaven's sakes? If everything is stored in the cloud, that should be the most secured account that you possess. Um, and that's not the case. Um, small businesses think they're too small. I literally just got an email from a colleague whose friend had been hacked. And there's so many things that happen once a hack takes place. It almost feels like life is on turbo speed and slow speed at the same time. It's a very bizarre thing after a hack. Um, the disconnect of it's not going to happen to me. It happens to every single human being. So if you're human, it can happen. And that cybersecurity is too technical, which I just completely disagree with. So um, there are, I do have some case studies of some very real uh, hacks and sort of how they took place. I did this uh, session for EC Council called Corporate Catfishing, and it really focused on those three firms and uh, what happened during their hack. But it's difficult because, just say so I have to look outside my screen, copyright. Oh yeah, all three of those did not survive. So the number one issue from cybersecurity is human error. And the number two issue is unpatched software. I think we can fix number two pretty easily. So truly just run your updates. That's it, run updates. Okay. And then from a human perspective, you really got to ditch passwords and get into passphrases. You have to do 16 characters plus, or it's really not very secure. So by doing that, you can introduce a password manager. That's an easy end user thing that you can do to improve your cybersecurity by like 80%. And then just never, ever, 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 ever use public Wi-Fi ever. Um, it looks like I might have a student on, so I'll let them tell you why. But um, that's just kind of a little bit about my background, a little bit about cybersecurity. And uh, I love what I do. I feel very, very fortunate that I get to do what I do for a living. I feel fortunate to have been in this field for this long and to have seen where technology has gone and where it's going. 
um, artificial intelligence scares the bejeebies out of me. So, um, and just one last thing. If you haven't been to this website yet, have I been pawned to PWNED? Uh, you can type in your email account and see, it'll show you a report of all the places your email account has been compromised. It might surprise you. And then I would go and change your password to a passphrase and maybe download LastPass or password one as a password manager, kind of start getting a little more secure. That's all I have. I'll open it up to questions from here. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Sherry. So, but we do have a question from Ben. He did mention why do password need to be need to be 16 characters? So one of the things that I do is ha ethical hacking. I don't do it anymore, but I did for years. And passwords are just too easy. They, uh, we have things called a dictionary uh, crack that we can run against your computer, your passwords that can hack your password in you know, three, five, 10, 15 seconds, very, very short period of time. Once you get over 16 characters, the time frame exponentially changes. From a hacker's perspective, that sucks. I don't want to sit on your computer and try to hack a 40 character password. Forget it. So to me, I call it a bounce factor. It's one of the things that a hacker will, it's like a wall they will hit. And instead of trying to crack the wall, and don't get me wrong, a lot of them will try to crack the wall. But if your wall is thicker than other walls around your castle, then I think it gives you a, a better fortified castle. I think um, hackers really want the easiest, the path of least resistance. And a lot of this is automated. So it's just automated to where if it's taking two, three, five minutes, forget it, move on to someone else. So, thank you. Any other questions from the audience? I mean, y'all are here. <laughs> yeah. So I do have a question. So, uh, cause one of the components for this industry expert series is also to help um, those non-traditional students, um, you know, from uh, like uh, uh, from male to female, the male, female. So, uh, so how is it being a woman in this industry? Um, I'm not gonna lie. It's, I wouldn't know. I mean, I'm a female. So the difference is there's not a lot of females. And so um, from me, that wasn't as big of a factor as it is for some because I found a tribe in IT that I really, really connected with. I love gaming. So, I mean, I can easily find a gaming tribe at my work, at, you know, in social environments that way. Um, I also really like hacking, for example. So I used to go to a hacker user group um, and in that sense, you open your network up to a more diverse group of people than what you may have just in your direct organization. But in any field, whether you're, you know, a, a man going into a traditional K through six teaching environment, that, that, that would be a minority in that sense. I think you just have to figure out where your strengths are in that area and um, and work on those areas that you need improvement on. And again, for me, it was always people management, um, project management. So areas that I might struggle with traditionally. Um, and I also found that there were very traditional roles like project management has almost traditionally always been a woman, um, which I find fascinating, but in IT that, you know, traditionally lends itself to an IT role. Security awareness is traditionally um, by, you know, on non-traditional roles. So I actually feel like IT has become significantly more diversified, you know, over the last 10 years. And um, you just gotta, you know, find your niche, find your tribe. And, and I, I think it's, it's a really fun career. <laughs> but thank you for asking that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. So. Uh, we've got a couple questions. So the, the other one is a follow-up from Ben is don't don't most devices limit the amount of passwords attempt? Well, sure, there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. But the reality is is that passwords 
are honestly kind of the number one reason that we get hacked. You end user and your password. So if there's one thing I could have you change, why wouldn't that be it? There's a few other things I'd ask you to change as well. After you get your passwords secured, I'd like you to get on what's called two-factor authentication. That can be challenging. That's a little bit more technical. It adds another layer of complexity to your ability to log into things like your banking environment. I like that layer of complexity. I like that layer of fortification against my data. But some people just going to a 16 character passphrase is gonna to be too much. I think you just have to change the way you look at security because honestly, people lock their houses, people lock their cars. I don't know why you don't lock your data. It doesn't make any sense to me. Some of the most precious things you have, which is your data, and you just, in general, end users don't take a real serious approach to it. But if you think of passwords instead as, as past phrases, so like, I love Paris in the spring of 1967. So there's a past phrase that I could easily remember. I could use it in multiple places with slight modifications, not the exact same passphrase, but you know, similar passphrases. I have a password manager that just makes it easy. And my passphrase on my password manager is like 64 characters. So that's pretty solid as far as that goes. And it has two factor authentication. So I think if you can just start with passphrases and, and chunk that, that's gonna be huge. And that'll be a good way for you to um, start taking ownership of that data and the importance of it. You know, it's kind of up to you. Thanks for that. So we've got another question from Casey. What inspired you to start your own business rather than work an established company? <laughs> um, I, I had, I, I think that my family is all entrepreneurs and at some point it was sort of inevitable to be honest. But what springboarded it was that um, my grandmother became terminally ill and I had to quit my job to take care of her. That's what springboarded it. I couldn't work, I just stay home. And in doing that, I had to make money. So I just spun up a consulting company. I would had enough years of experience at that point that I could do some stuff. Um, and I had a couple of colleagues. And so we just started a little consulting company and went from there. Uh, I grew that to about 200 people, sold it, retired for a few years, and then went back to work. So um, I think I am an entrepreneur by spirit. I feel lucky that I've been able to start my own company a few times. I currently own a woman-owned cybersecurity company with an all-women staff. That just is happenstance. We used to have a guy in marketing, but during COVID, uh, everyone, everyone had to go home and take care of kids. So, um, but yeah, we're an all-women cyber company. And I, I feel like, you know, there's all kinds of paths you can take in this realm. But in all honesty, you got to try things. And it's okay to not like it or to fail at it. Um, I can say lately, I've been very challenged by uh, different aspects of IT and um, management and communication. And, you know, that's, I think, a good thing for your career. So. Yeah, thanks for sharing. So we have a question from Sherry. You mentioned my students. Do you teach classes, workshop? And a follow-up is, what should we look for in, in a cybersecurity security educational program? Um, so I just am currently am an interim instructor here at CWI. I taught the Certified Ethical Cl Hackers class last month. Really, I just showed up. But um, And then this month, we're learning digital forensics. Um, so I am interim as an instructor. It just so happens Robert Roberta had already reached out to me prior to me getting this. And um, yeah, I think from an educational standpoint, you know, you have to remember a couple of things. Your education is, you'll get out of it what you put into it. And I think that there are some misnomers about um, community college. I think that there are some community colleges nationwide that have very good cyber programs. They have good funding. They have good infrastructure. They have good lab environments. Those are all fabulous things. And I think that um, if you exercise the resources of the university, regardless of where that is, it really comes down to the balance of 
you know, your program, the, the university staff, the additional things they offer, like, like Roberto said, having industry experts come in. Um, my particular cohort happens to have a internship program that we were able to spin up extremely quickly at the beginning of this year. And now I have several students going through internship program at the Boise Cyberdome, which is phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, so I think things like that, seeing if the college is going to help you, you know, sort of beyond the just educational portion, because you've got to get some hands on experience in this field to be good at it. And really the best way to do that is to game. If you can be a gamer, there's a ton of hacking games. There's, I mean, I, I could list three or four of them that, that from my perspective really changed my ability to be a hacker. So, you know, your education, you really have to take a, an active participation in it. And then I think you, you really look at the college as a whole along with the program itself. So, uh, the, another question is for those us going into cybersecurity, would you recommend any books, material that would be beneficial before we take on program? Yes, um, yes, let me grab a book actually. So, I mean, I think it's extremely important that you understand education is forever. Um, this is a book from an end user perspective. I'll have to snapshot it for you because I have my blur on. It's um, The Secret to Cybersecurity. It's called A Simple Plan to Protect Your Family and Your Business from Cybercrime. The reason I like this is from an end user perspective, you can really get a solid understanding of the basic things like passphrases that you need to do to be cyber safe. So the first step I would say is become a cyber safe person. Learn to be cyber safe in this world of IT. And if you feel like that is something you can tackle without being, you know, freaked out, then I would go on to something more technical, which is this just basic, big, giant book on cybersecurity. But it's a great read. It's very um, broken down, I feel like in general. Um, it's, a, it's a, you know, I think it's a course text, textbook, but it's really a great way for you to understand pretty much like it covers video surveillance. It just, it's a really great uh, all around cyber book if you're looking for something more technical. Any more questions from yeah, the audience? You mentioned a couple games on hacking. Can we get the names of them? Uh, yeah, I have to pull them up on my phone because I just have so many games. But I mean, honestly, like, let me pull up the Play Store and I can tell you a few of them. Um, and I will tell you, like, I don't spend money on games. I don't buy coins. I don't buy time. I don't do any of that. But you have, so sometimes you can only hack for like three minutes. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So you got to make that three minutes worth it. Um, but yes, yeah, so let me pull up a couple on the Play Store. I limit what I keep on my phone uh, as a way to be cyber safe. <coughs> so I remove games when I don't use them. I play them, then I remove them. And I play them, then I remove them. Okay. Oh, Play Store. Anyone else? <coughs> Excuse me. Where'd you get your master's? I got my master's from Western Governors University out of Seattle. So I'm originally from that area and uh, they were the only master's program at the time. So I think I got this eight, maybe years ago-ish. And they were the only master's program at the time that offered these two certifications. These two certifications, which I wanted, that's really what I wanted. I didn't, I wasn't even looking at a master's program. I wanted to get, to become a certified ethical hacker. And <coughs> the education for that through the vendor, which I believe was EC Council, was like $3,000 for the class. And then another, you know, I think you got a free voucher, but the voucher was probably $795 for the exam. So you're looking at 
almost $4,000 to go to become a certified ethical hacker. And then I also wanted the cyber hacking forensics investigator. That's another $4,000. That's a lot of money. So I was like, well, man, for $8,000, what else could I do? And I really looked at like 50 call. I mean, I really, really tried hard to find a college that could do it all. But my program was 100% remote, 100% on your own. So it was a tough program in that sense. There was no instructor-led component to it at all. Everything you had to do was 100% solo. So that was challenging. I recruited two of my colleagues to go through the program with me so that I wasn't solo. So myself and two of my best colleagues all got our masters through the program simultaneously. And that helped, but yeah, it was tough. So another question, um, what advice would you give someone entering into an IT work field such as when doing an interview. So I guess when it comes to doing interviews. I'm um, honestly, I, I find the interviewing process really challenging because you can have an HR interview that asks you questions that are like, what are your three best qualities? So if I'm not prepared for that question, I find that very the HR interview process to be kind of challenging. What I would recommend, excuse me. <coughs> Better, not, not done yet. Um, what I would recommend is watching YouTube videos because there are kind of different phases of interviewing. I really believe the HR phase, which is just to get you to the person that might ask you more technical questions or whatnot. Um, if you're going after a job that requires experience, then I would look at the job description and come up with an example or two on each of the bullet points of what your experience is so that you can talk to that job description. That's extremely helpful, especially um, as you progress through the interview. But really it's a matter of kind of being prepared for the questions that can come out of left field um, and how you respond to that. So for me, we do interviewing a lot differently than what a lot of organizations do right now. We do a very conversational interview and we kind of like to get to know people. Um, and depending on the role that you're interviewing for, you might also have a panel interview. I find those the most challenging um, I've had a nine, as a matter of fact, at this college, when they wanted me to come interview for this role, there were nine people on that interview panel, nine. They just kept introducing themselves. I was like, oh my goodness. <coughs> and each one of them had questions. Um, so I think if you understand there's sort of 21 common questions that get asked throughout the interview process, know the answers to those. Um, I, I heard this analogy of like having an interviewing toolkit and I firmly believe that. I think if you have two or three answers to any question that we would consider a common question, it'll give you a confidence and it'll allow you to kind of promote yourself which is what you need to do in a job interview is sell your skills and, and understand how you can be valuable to that employer in that position. Thanks for sharing. And just to um, echo what you mentioned, um, again, uh, uh, I'm here to support in that role, like help you prepare for an interview and do mock and anything in style of interviews. So if you're into looking for because I know with this program, there's a component, with, it's an internship component. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if the majority of you already are in an internship or seeking. Uh, that's something that we can definitely um, uh, help with that to facilitate those conversations because I know entering can be overwhelmed, not just within in this type of field, but just in general. So those are, and, and again, those are things that I'm going to be talking about, things that we can support you uh, and, 
and help you through that process to, through resume interview skills and everything like that. So I'll, um, I'll put my email on the chat box so you can have it and shoot me an email if you need help with anything that I mentioned it. Uh, with that being said, but um, any more questions? The games? Yeah, they still want to know about the games. I know, I know. Okay, so let me pull my phone up here. Okay, so the first one is just called Hackers and it has like this little shield is this red, almost like a spider hand. It's really, it's like a digital spider thing. It's just called Hackers. It's one of my all-time favorite. It's by Trickster Arts. And it's truly one of the games that I began on. So it's called Spiders, right? It's, it's no, it's called, called Hackers. Hackers. Sorry, Hackers. And it's by Trickster Arts. Some of them are good for younger ages um, as opposed to yourself. So if you're looking for someone else, you know, like I play with my kiddos. So then I have a hacking simulator by Predator Games. That's a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. So those are two to get you started. Hacker Simulator by Predator Games. Go forth and hack. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? If there's no more questions, I think this will conclude our today conversation of, about learning about cybersecurity and learning about your journey, uh, Sherry. And I really do appreciate it for making um, the time uh, to speak to our students and also mostly uh, just um, to share your knowledge and hopefully uh, students will uh, gain some uh, something out of it and mm -hmm. and also remember to reach out um to me if you're seeking to do anything with um resume or internship or things like that if you're ready for that part just email me and we can set an appointment to talk one on, on how to support you with that being said i just want to say thank you to everybody for coming out and and all of that um uh, stay safe and we'll see each other around Thank, Thank you. you guys. Bye. Yeah.